In the book of Acts, the storyteller shares that after the resurrection, the risen Christ spent a period of time with the disciples, speaking to them about God's kingdom, just before he disappeared from their sight for the last time. He told the group he was with, do not leave Jerusalem. Wait there for the gift that God has promised, the one you've heard me talking about. John baptized with water, but you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so they returned to Jerusalem and they waited. Now, I want to tell you that for the longest time, I've had in my head this image of the immediate circle of Jesus' disciples going to the upper room and just kind of sitting and waiting. But as I read the book of Acts again, I realized that idea really missed something. They didn't just sit around. As they waited, they prayed deeply. And even more than that, as they waited, having experienced the presence and teaching of the risen Christ, they made some decisions and took some actions. Through discussion and nomination and some rolling of the dice, they discerned that Matthias was to be part of the group that would now become known as the Apostles. And then came Pentecost. A sound like a violent wind from the heavens. What seemed like tongues of fire separating and resting on each of them. And then the Holy Spirit telling the story of Jesus Christ through them in a way that everyone who heard could understand, each in the language of their heart. In that moment, in the sharing of the transformative story of Jesus of Nazareth, his death and resurrection, his teachings about the presence of God's reign, the church was born. And here we are, over two millennia later, still telling that transformative story still wondering at his death and resurrection, still sharing in our understandings of his teachings about the presence of God alive in creation. The United Church of Canada, though only having a distinct history of 97 years, with a geographical focus in Canada and Bermuda, is part of that 2,000-year community of Christ's disciples a worldwide communion that is not bound by geography, space, or time. We are part of that Pentecost communion moment where language was shown to not be a barrier to God's love. This is the last moderator's message that I'll be offering to the church because my term comes to an end this summer. It's fitting that this message comes at Pentecost, when we celebrate the birth of the church. Because what I want you to know, most of all, is that I celebrate you, church. As individual disciples of Jesus, as communities of faith, as people involved in the many ways of being church, as beloved children of God, Thank you so very much for everything that we've been able to share together these past four years and for everything that you are going to do and be in the days and weeks and years to come. And so as I prepare to move on to my next ministry, I'd like to remind us of who the General Council understands us as the United Church of Canada to be. I'd like to ask you to reflect on these words and perhaps to chat with others in your community of faith or others who are part of the wider Christian communion or maybe even just folks you think might be interested in who we understand ourselves to be. Perhaps with them, you'll find new ways of living these words out. Here they are. Called by God as disciples of Jesus, the United Church of Canada seeks to be a bold, connected, evolving church of diverse, courageous, hope-filled communities 
united in deep spirituality, inspiring worship, and daring justice. Remember, friends, you are the church. You are people called by God. You are people who mend the world. So, however you do it, do it with deep spirituality, with bold discipleship, with daring justice, and do it knowing you are never alone. The peace of Christ holds us, the Creator's love molds us, and the Pentecost wings of the Holy Spirit enfold us now and forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.